Dear attendees, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, we warmly welcome you on today's session. Uh, the topic of today's Midas Academy webinar is focused on dynamic analysis of one interesting food bridge done in Czech Republic in past year, and uh, which analysis was done in uh, Midas civil software. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to write them in the webinar. We will answer them uh, later per email. My name is Jan Blažek and I am CEO of company Wicom and the senior structure engineer with uh, over 10 years experience in uh, structure engineering. Uh, I will make this presentation in co uh, collaboration with my colleagues uh, Petr Harazim for, and Mr. Engler, uh, who were from company Walbeck, who were uh, the co-authors of this project, and uh, they are also uh, experienced engineers and uh, structural engineers. This webinar uh, is uh, its part uh, I will present today is about the background of the project and uh, introduce you into the dynamics analysis we made in Midas Civil. And uh, then uh, we will present you uh, a procedure how we made the dynamic analysis in Midas. Uh, at the beginning of this presentation, uh, the project will be presented uh, its design and its manufacture and on-site assembly. And then I will show you some theor theoretical background to dynamic analysis we did, and also some practical information about your options when you have when you will be performing uh, this type of analysis. Uh, at first, I would like to present our company. Uh, we are a member of a Valbeck Group, which is an engineering company uh, which is active in the area of infrastructure design uh, in Czech Republic, Slovakia, Ukraine, and Russia. And uh, our company is uh, a member of this group. And we are focused on uh, designing and consulting uh, engineering structural uh, structural constructions like steel and concrete bridges, bridge building technologies, steel structures uh, for which we make uh, detailed design assembly documentations, and we have uh, bureaus in Prague and other Czech cities. Here are a few examples of our recent projects. On left photo, uh, you can see the connected uh, bridges between two old buildings in Prague University campus. And on the right, there is a reconstruction of 100 years old riveted bridge. These are projects we are now finishing and they are going in, uh, into service. We also design technologies for, uh, several, for several incremented launching bridges. Uh, this one uh, is the largest uh, bridge of this type uh, made in Slovakia last year. Uh, it is a 750 meters long highway concrete bridge in Slovakia. And now back to our presented project. It's located in Central Europe uh, on borders between Czech and Slovak republics. Uh, that 100 years ago uh, created Czechoslovakia and later on beginning of 90s years uh, split it into two countries and later in 2004 they both entered the European Union and then the borders disappeared once again. Uh, 
the main scope of the project was creating a connection between uh, these two countries uh, over border line river Morava in beautiful forest landscape uh, with a common history and archaeological sites from Great Moravian Empire back from 19, 9th century. Uh, the client was joint venture of both border regions and the project was mainly financed from European Regional Fund for cross-border cooperation. Uh, we, uh, uh, our company, uh, designed this uh, footbridge from tender documentation to assembly documentation. So here could, you could see the landscape with flood rainforests and river Morava. Uh, on both sides of, uh, of both, both banks, there are some cycle paths and uh, the river and many archaeological sites. Here in closer map, you could see three most interesting places here. Uh, number one is the location of our full bridge uh, across the river. Number two is newly built museum and archaeological site from 9th century. And number three is the oldest uh, Christian church, church uh, in Middle Europe. This is on Slovakian border. Okay. So there are some interesting places that needed to be connected and our project was meant to do this. Uh, and now to our design, uh, we had to connect two banks with the structure length over 140 meters. We had to locate the piers outside the river so that led to the span length which was unequal, uh, 25 meters, 92 the main span over river and 25 meters a distance. Uh, we, de we designed subtle steel structure with two inclined truss beams reinforced in the main span over river with uh, steel arcs with steel tubular suspenders. We have to place the deck seven meters above the river according to uh, river transport transport demands and we also had to adjust the design according to number of demands from environmental and other administrations so here you can see the overall design main truss beams steel arcs uh, suspenders subtle concrete piers and abutments and they both were founded on uh, pre-drilled concrete piles. The slope of piers was adjusted to main beams inclinement. The bridge deck is from cast in situ concrete into formwork from steel sheeting plates and uh, concreted, uh, connected with uh, shear studs with the steel structure. The height of the arcs is nine meters above, above the bridge deck. And the main parts of steel structure is made from tubular hollow steel profiles. The profiles were hot rolled or welded from steel grade S355. The total weight of the structure uh, was about 300 tons. Drilled piles, piles are uh, diameter 900 millimeters with length about 12 meters. The bridge deck is made from usual concrete C30 with formwork from trapezoidal sheeting. The suspender spacing had to be adjusted according to requirements of ornithologists because the region is known for uh, bird settlements.
The lowest bid for execution was given by joint venture of Slovakian constructors uh, Dobrastav and Tavokov with price around 3.8 million euro. And the steel structure had been manufactured in Slovakia and was transported to building site divided into 11 sections. The assembly began on Slovakian bank from uh, environmental reasons. There have been mounted the main Spain girder with arcs uh, on temporary supporting structure and they were built it, uh, they were welded together on the Slovakian bank. And uh, then the main span with length over 94 meters and weight over 200 tons were lifted and settled into final position using one of the biggest mobile cranes, uh, Liebherr. So we had uh, around 40 meter long uh, crane arm and we had to make move with the loaded crane into the river bank to reduce the maximum crane arm and uh, after setting the main span into its pos final position the outer spans were mounted and welded, welded together into one continuous structure The manipulation with the structure had to be really precise. We had to satisfy precision about two centimeters on this 94 meter long structure to fit into pre-drilled holes uh, for bearings uh, on piers. The bridge had been opened for public since October last year. We also performed several tests on the structure. We will talk about them later. And now I want to show you a short video from the assembly. So you can see the, the main span with arcs uh, mounted on the bank and the mobile crane, the pair 750. The structure has to be turned around for 90 degrees and set it into final position. This movements with with the with the structure was done by only two persons who were directing the footbridge into into desired uh, position. Uh, this process lasted just for three hours. Uh, and then the outer spans were, were also lifted and put it in the final position. You can also see it's the beautiful landscape around. Okay, so now we will step up to the content of the second part uh, in which we will present to you the dynamic analysis. Uh, increased vibration problems was encountered in the last few years showing that uh, the foot bridges are no longer should be designed only for static loads but also for dynamic actions and uh, their vibra vibration behavior uh, should be studied more precisely. Uh, 
for these lightweight structures like this steel uh, foot bridges uh, the decrease uh, in stiffness leads to lower natural frequencies with greater risk of resonance while the decrease in mass reduces the inertia uh, resonance occurs in the frequency of the bridge coincidence with the frequency of excitation so we have to really study precisely step frequencies and uh, eigenvalues of, uh, of our structures. Uh, we did the analysis in uh, MIDAS. And at first, when you are beginning with your dynamic analysis, uh, you should uh, uh, choose uh, how you uh, transfer the, the mass of or the self white of the structure uh, into into your model into your dynamic model uh, so you have uh, two options uh, you could uh, the, transfer them through uh, lumped mass or uh, you could uh, do it uh, other way the lumped mass uh, has to be uh, has uh, less accurate results. The masses are transferred into nodes, and uh, this is a good uh, this is a good option when you have uh, big structures uh, and uh, you could transfer the masses into uh, x, y, z directions and uh, your computation will be quicker the other option is uh, that you will transfer it as a consistent mass demanding uh, on cal calculation of your uh, fem model uh, but uh, it it is more accurate uh, the loads are redistributed along the wall length of the beam uh, but it takes uh, more time to calculate uh, these these models, and for these big structures, it is not uh, the preferred option. So uh, we chosen uh, Lanzos uh, analysis, uh, where the trigonal matrix is used to perform uh, the eigenvalue analysis. This method is effectively used uh, when performing uh, eigenvalue analysis for lower modes, so like for these subtle structures. Uh, for analysis of the eigenvalues as uh, periods, frequencies, uh, the angular frequencies and shapes, uh, we choose the lenses and uh, the determinant of the matrix is finding out the non-trivial solution of the homogeneous algebraic equations. According to amount of degrees of freedom, it can be expressed the number of eigenvalues. Uh, we chose uh, to have 100 frequencies, uh, which, can, which uh, should cover all significant modes for our uh, dynamic analysis. So from our analysis, uh, from our model, we received the frequencies, again values, and the periods. Uh, we saw that uh, from, from the shape of these uh, eigen, eigen values, uh, we saw in which mode the, the structure is uh, vibrating. Uh, you can see that in uh, in the first uh, frequency, natural frequency, uh, it is a lateral vibration. In uh, the first vertical vibration is uh, this number three. And uh, number four is the first rotational vibration mode and uh, number five is the second vertical mode uh, 
We sorted manually the lateral, vertical, and rotational modes, uh, which are subsequently compared with the limit values. Uh, there is really important to say that more models were tried for the final comparison. These eigenmodes are without the effect of the composite concrete deck due to effect of partial uh, connecting uh, of coating between the concrete deck and shear studs. And this caused a lower stiffness uh, and a little bit smaller second vertical mode chain. We also created other types of models, but uh, we decided that this one was uh, the one we, we will continue with. Uh, this is the first analysis that has to be done uh, before the time history analysis. Uh, our criterion is that minimal of 90% of the mass have to oscillate, otherwise, uh, we increase the output of frequency O2 performance. So uh, we have to design the food bridge according to Eurocodes. And uh, the, there are not many uh, guides. Uh, in your codes that will say you how to go through uh, um, precise dynamic analysis. So you could find in, in the Eurocode 1919 uh, that there is a uh, there is a line about verification of the comfort criteria that should be performed uh, for uh, for first eigenvalues and you have to have the frequencies of deck uh, less than 5 hertz for vertical vibrations and 2.5 hertz for horizontal torsional vibrations. This criteria uh, is cannot be satisfied with most of uh, slender steel uh, foot bridges. So also there is a comfort criteria which says uh, your uh, your vertical vibrations should be less than 0 0.7 meters per uh, square second and uh, for acceleration and also you have criteria for horizontal vibration induced by traffic and group of pedestrians in uh, code for uh, loading of bridges there is a chapter regarding uh, eigenvalue analysis that we should have, that it says that we should have appropriate structural model and uh, that pedestrians are inducing periodic forces with frequencies 1 to 3 hertz in vertical directions and 0 0.5 to 1.5 hertz in horizontal directions. And designers should define appropriate dynamic models of pedestrians' loads for and comfort criteria. So uh, it says it's on on the designer that he should uh, take the right approach to study this uh, this problematics. So that's not really much information, but. Uh, the, the European Union uh, found, funded uh, a research on this topic and it's, uh, it was published in a study called Design of uh, Light Wide Food Bridges and Human Induced Vibrations, where Professor Heinmeier uh, studied uh, precisely uh, the behavior of of steel structures or, or dynamic behavior of uh, food bridges. And uh, he also defined some uh, criteria and loading densities. Uh, according to significance, significance, location, and amount of people going through the food bridge, they sorted out the traffic classes. This, this, in this case, we uh, agreed with client that uh, we should use the TC3 uh, density and uh, 
the, the bridge was also tested for different classes with more strict regulation from point of view of people and acceleration limit for comfort. So we also picked the comfort class number two as a with medium degree of comfort. So in recent, recent years, some footbridges were excited laterally by dense pedestrian streams in which pedestrians interacted with the bridge vibrations. Uh, Self-excited large response was produced and caused uh, discomfort. Footbridges should be designed also in such a way that pedestrians and their bridge interaction phenomena, also called locked in, do not arise. Uh, Professor Heinmeier in the previous mentioned uh, material or studied the force evoked by uh, by human steps and their dependency between time and uh, the um, ratio between vertical and horizontal forces. Uh, the force evoked by a human is the biggest one and the period is half opposite to a lateral force. All three measurements were recorded into the graphs and fitted into Fourier series, and they created an approximation for a later analysis. Uh, the Fourier series, Fourier series uh, are displayed with the full line, and the experiment are represented by dashed line. So these experiments led to uh, creating uh, a time-dependent uh, pedestrian load uh, called PT, uh, which is uh, oscillating. And this load is applied according with the mode shape uh, as shown on the figure. And uh, unlike vertical vibrations, which are absorbed by legs and joints, uh, so that pedestrian streams synchronize with the vertical vibration uh, that have not been observed on footbridges, people are much more sensible to these lateral vibrations. As for walking, the center of gravity is not only varied vertically, but also laterally, uh, one foot to another. The frequency of movement of the human center is half walking frequency. So uh, when the person walks on the laterally vibrating bridge, they tries to compensate an additional movement uh, and by swaying with the bridge displacement for lateral stability. Uh, so here uh, is an equation for, for a load model, which is uh, acceleration of the loading of the bridge uh, defined in uh, crowd density, P uh, slash uh, square meter, persons per square meter. Uh, that uh, effects uh, mentioned uh, is uh, developing uh, the spectral method. In the two other evolution, uh, evolution methods, the pedestrian induced action is represented by uh, distributed load PT and which is applied uh, on the structure according to the mode chain. Uh, here you can see uh, the G forces which are uh, divided into vertical in Newton's longitudinal and lateral and there is also the C factor which is the reduction coefficient uh, that takes account in the, the probability that for frequency approach in the natural frequency uh, and uh, the coefficient uh, differ is different uh, for each of the loading models below. Uh, there is normal distribution of pacing frequencies for normal walking uh, was uh, studied by Professor Matsumoto, who investigated a sample of 500 persons. And uh, from his study, uh, we received these graphs of uh, reduction coefficient, which we use as a C factor. 
from our uh, material we used, the design of lightweight food bridges for human induced vibrations, uh, we have closer criteria for vertical and uh, longitudinal vibrations and also for lateral vibrations. And from our analysis, we received uh, the first natural frequencies 0 0.87, which are for the first vertical uh, vibration mode. Uh, and uh, this is uh, between the range uh, in uh, specified in the material and also other vertical frequencies uh, the third one 1.3 1. Uh, 1. uh, these are also in the range we uh, that could uh, that could induce uh, oscillation. So also from uh, another criteria with uh, that we have to have the range for uh, vertical and longitudinal vibration in the range of 2.5 hertz and uh, 4.6 hertz. Uh, we have some natural frequencies that are in this range so uh, from all of these criteria we saw that uh, the dynamic analysis uh, needs to be performed uh, on our structure the damping is an essential part of designing and looking for a spectrum of response of the structure uh, for calculation we took account uh, into um, uh, mass and proportional damping which uh, a method we use here uh, we chosen the Rayleigh damping and uh, this uh, this method uh, is uh, really uh, depending on the uh, damping coefficient or parameter which we uh, which we can calculate or which we can assess uh, from uh, uh, from literature you can find that uh, for composite steel to concrete uh, structure we uh, we should be with the damping factor between uh, 0 0.30 and 0 0.60 for an average uh, uh, average foot bridge and the minimum value should be used for uh, in uh, for smaller construction like 20 to 30 meters uh, also the the graph on the left side recognizes the dependency between damping ratio and angular frequencies the blue line is a uh, mass proportional essential for uh, foot bridges with uh, low frequencies and the red line is uh, for uh, stiffness proportional which should be could be used for uh, connections like welds bolts and uh, shear studs and it is increasing uh, the stiffness is increasing with uh, with the frequency Damping ratio here is derived uh, from uh, from the analysis and uh, is acquired from the value from the and also should be checked uh, with the uh, expected average value from this table. Uh, stiffness proportional coefficient uh, beta is negligible opposite to mass proportion. So uh, then we uh, move forward to time history analysis for crowd load. We choose the line, linear type of analysis uh, with uh, model analysis and periodic type, uh, which is uh, 
defined by uh, a, a periodic uh, function. Uh, the time increment of this time history analysis uh, it significantly affects the accuracy of the analysis results, and we uh, have to use at least the one tenth of the smaller of the period of time forcing function, or the natural frequency of the of the structure. Uh, Direct integration is mainly used for nonlinear nonlinear analysis like explicit and implicit actions of uh, loading. Uh, the group of the people induce the excitation of the bridge in the critical modes. So uh, this is recorded as a periodic history uh, type with the linear response of the structure. The force is different for every mode shape. On the basis of the model analysis, it was necessary to assess several eigenvalues shapes for the possibility of undesirable oscillation. Uh, there is uh, intimately explained the approach of calculation for different mode shapes uh, from the point of view of the intensity. Uh, two, multi, uh, two vertical mode shapes are displayed for demonstration. Based on the footage, uh, our, our experience, uh, the expanding damping was 0.58%. Uh, the pedestrian density uh, was considered uh, 0.5 pedestrians per square meter. Uh, medium comfort class was expected for pedestrian density and acceleration less than one meter per square second. Uh, so we have to evoke the loads uh, for the acceleration of the footbridge and the time loading is oscillating up and down according to chosen time history function and uh, we have to put loads according to our modal shapes and the force is 10 seconds uh, balancing up and down in the critical places of the modal shapes. Here you can see the vertical mode shapes with the first uh, vertical bending frequency 1.33 hertz. And we also performed uh, on site tests, measurements of, of the real structure frequencies. And uh, we were quite close uh, with the measured values with the uh, one calculated. So we measured 1.35 hertz for the first bending frequency. And for the second vertical frequency, uh, we measured 1.98, which was also close to the calculated uh, uh, frequency 1.94. Here are a few uh, pictures, photos from uh, from the performed measurements. Uh, on the left, you can see the static load test with with uh, heavy loaded uh, transport vehicles. And uh, on the right side, there is um, a vehicle inducing the uh, dynamic force. Okay, this is once again that we choose uh, the comfort class number two, in which we have to satisfy the limits for uh, acceleration in vertical and uh, lateral direction. So we uh, perform the analysis for time load uh, action. And for lateral vibrations, we received a really low value, about uh, 0 0.002 meters per square second, which is uh, really below the limits we had. 
And for the vertical vibrations, we received uh, the acceleration uh, 0.92, which was also below uh, the values uh, defined above for comfort class number two, which is one meter per square second. So I'm, I'm now at the end of, of this uh, webinar. Uh, I hope that you had some practical information about uh, options you have when performing the type, this type of analysis. Uh, there are a few steps you have to take. You have to choose uh, how you convert the loads to masses. You have to perform eigenvalue analysis to receive uh, model shapes and uh, frequencies. Uh, you have to choose which limits uh, you take account in for comfort uh, of pedestrians and uh, the amount of forces induced by, by human groups. You have to calculate the damping uh, and choose the method of damping you, you will use and then uh, uh, perform the time history analysis with a group of Crowd, crowd people and uh, at the end uh, you also have to perform the harmonic analysis to to study the acceleration of the structure to to meet the desired limits uh, thank you for watching this webinar and if you have any more questions please write them uh, into the webinar or uh, at email info.